Welcome back. It's week seven. Can you believe it? Week seven of the What's Next series. And this week, Pastor Kevin was talking to us about the idea of launching people into mission and ministry. And that's kind of a big step for some of us to be able to step out and say, hey, my faith is a great thing and it's meaningful for me, but how do I take the step to have a conversation with someone else? How do I come along somebody else and really serve them and serve them well and serve them in Christ's name? And so I've got a couple of friends here. Uh, this is a great time to have this conversation. I've got Christine, who is the CEO of CityServe. Some of you are probably familiar with CityServe, soon to be our very close neighbors across South Livermore. Exciting. It'll make the partnership even stronger, I hope. Uh, and then we've got Dawit, who is a pastor in Hayward at Good Shepherd Lutheran, but also, for the purpose of this, you're also a part of Link Bay Area. And we kind of want to get it, kind of explore a little bit about how we at our Savior can really connect with your organizations here so that what the, the dreams we have, the ideas we might have, can connect and connect with other people so that we can reach the world for the gospel, whether it's locally or beyond. So why don't we take a little bit of time to kind of talk about, you know, who you guys are and the organizations that you're representing. So I, um, I don't know, who wants to jump? Christine, do you want to jump in first? And <laughs> sure. So my name is Christine, and I'm a fairly new CEO the last year um, with City Serve of the Tri-Valley. And just like it says, we're mainly focused in the Tri-Valley, so that's Dublin, Pleasanton, and Livermore. Mm -hmm. And our heart is really to care, coordinate, and connect with people that are in crisis. So our organization identifies the needs and works collaboratively with the police, with the schools, with other social service providers, with the churches, in the benevolence, and, um, and when people are in crisis, we identify their needs, and then we try to engage, depending on what their need is, uh, connect them back to the churches or the resources that are available. So our heart of compassion um, is just a huge value for us. So I've been leading that for uh, the last year, but before that, I was leading a nonprofit in the Tri-Valley area, working with about 75 churches and mobilizing thousands of volunteers to help people in need. So I came out here, and hopefully um, we'll be able to get engaged the churches out in the community here soon. How did you, how did you, I'm just curious, how did you get into kind of the nonprofit field, if you will? Um, I just think I've always, uh, well, when I was a church member, and I was just Frustrated. I was out in the Santa Cruz area, and I felt like everyone was trying to bring everyone to church. And I knew in my heart, because I was around artists and musicians, they were never, a lot of them were never going to come into a church. So I think I was, my faith, I was like, how do I become the church and go out to the people and be a light in the community um, into places where a lot of people, they don't want to feel uncomfortable. And so I think it was just cultivating in me many, like 20 years ago. And so when I had the opportunity, the pastors in Fremont said, hey, we need someone here. It's going to be in a government building. Help our churches to get out in the community. I was like, sign me up, you know. So <laughs> I've been doing this type of work for 20 years all over the world. Um, and I'm just really passionate about Christians getting into government, getting into nonprofits, you know, and just being sprinkled all over in all different lanes um, and being making the most of every opportunity. Good, good. Don't we, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and then maybe a little bit about Link Bay Area and, and the possible connection points between us? Yeah. Uh, my name is Dawit. I grew up in East Africa, a country called Eritrea. Uh, and I'm sure many of you know where that is exactly in the map. If, if, if not, so there's it, a great thing called Google. Exactly. You can Google this and it will solve the problem. Uh, I grew up in, in Eritrea. My folks were part of the Lutheran church. Uh, my grandfather was a converted a Christian, and my, my folks both grew up in the church. And um, when I was uh, 11 years old, my, my father passed away, and two years after, my mother passed away, and the country was torn up uh, in war. So I kind of make long story short, my siblings find a way to get me out of Eritrea. So I ended up in America. I was adopted by uh, my uncle who lived in Boston, who lives in Boston still. Um, and so I moved to Boston. I lived in Boston for a few years. Uh, complete dilemma. Uh, you know, coming from eastern side of the, 
the continent of Africa to get to dark, cold Boston was <laughs> and no no language. It was it was a nightmare. Uh, but always been uh, love to see uh, the church grow. So I, I just found a church nearby and I attended a Lutheran church called First Boston Lutheran in downtown Boston. Um, I didn't understand anything they said for like two years or so. But it was great to just be in the community of saints, uh, to take the body and the blood and to, to repent and hear the forgiveness of uh, my sins and all. So, but long story short, I ended up uh, in the Bay Area about uh, 10, 11 years ago to start an Eritrean Lutheran church. There was a huge influx of Eritrean immigrants in, in the Bay Area. So I started a church um, in Hayward, uh, part of Good Shepherd Lutheran. Uh, I was in the seminary half of my time as well while I was planting the church. Now I ended up uh, pastoring uh, Good Shepherd, which is an English congregation that is multi-ethnic, uh, that reached our community in a, in a different way than we did in the past. And also I pastor the Eritrean congregation that speaks a specific language uh, to reach out to Eritreans in the Bay Area. Uh, in my tenure, how I got to link Bay Area was that when I came to plant the church, I was 19 years old. I was extremely excited. I thought the church was gonna just pop up the next door to everybody's, um, you know, mind and viewpoints, uh, that didn't happen. I, um, I, in, in the Bay Area, it's very expensive, very diverse, social economy, uh, education, it was, it's just, it's really, really hard to navigate, and I kind of felt like a bit lost after two years. Uh, it was a point where, like, okay, what am I doing? And, uh, and the weird part was the people that we were attracting were professors at uh, Alameda College and chemists, there are trains that graduated from high-level universities, married with three, four kids. I was 22 years old, and then they're like, you're gonna be our pastor, and I'm like, I'm not sure. This is not what I, I don't know if I can manage this. Um, so uh, Aaron Putnam, who's a director of Link Bay Area, he was a pastor at Good Shepherd. Uh, we kind of met, we had a lot of coffee. Coffee is my favorite thing to do. So we sat through things and we talked through it, and I think he asked me, uh, he asked me good questions that were able to bring out what was my desire, what the Lord was uh, developing in my heart. And I think he walked alongside me for about nine years to help me see uh, where the Lord is calling me, to help me see uh, and navigate my way into ministry. Um, and after I was able to at least know where I'm heading, uh, Link started and Pastor Aaron became full to do the same thing with hundreds of hundreds of uh, immigrant and even new leaders in the Bay Area to be able to help them navigate through ministry over a long period of time by walking alongside them in order to be able to uh, uh, see through their vision uh, because many of them uh, two years down the road they, they tend to they walk out of it yeah. and it's yeah. hard because it can be it can be hard I mean ministry mm -hmm. if you allow yourself to isolate and say well I'm going to do my thing that's kind of a hard way. To, it's a hard way to do it, whether you're an individual member in the congregation saying, hey, I want to go do this, but if there's nobody walking alongside you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in, in the past, I've worked uh, kind of mentoring and working with other church workers and trying to continually say to them, you got to be with other people. you mm -hmm. you got to connect. you got to do stuff together, mm -hmm. which it very much sounds like the, the two organizations are very similar in that regard, mm -hmm. is that you're bringing others alongside with you so that it's not just a matter of, hey, I've got this thought, let me go do this. Mm -hmm. It's, hey, how can we together right. Right. come and do this with each other? Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to uh, talk a little bit about how each of the, the, your organizations kind of interact with uh, kind of the local church. So like, mm -hmm. you know, our Savior here in Livermore, we want to be able to do more than necessarily we all might have the resources or the connections to be able to do how would link bay area how would city serve work in partnership with us so that we can come up and maybe do things that we never might have even dreamed mm -hmm. reasonably possible for us to be able to do i don't know who wants to jump on which end of that you're cooler than me so you should always start <laughs> you're cooler than me <laughs> well as you know, the issues of our day are extremely complex. So one person, one organization cannot complete and help a person. Um, and so our organization, we look at each individual that whether they're unsheltered or sheltered as a whole person. How can we serve this person in a holistic way? Um, a whole with a W. And um, so we assess what the needs are, but the ways that we can engage 
the community and the churches is when we start to address that um, lack of family connection. There's a lot of loss. There's a lot of grief. There's a lot of um, disconnection, um, a lot of un not understanding their identity. So as we're working with these people, we can go, okay, they have a spiritual need. How do we connect them with the church? Would it be a care advocate, which is a volunteer that could come alongside and mentor this person? Is it a single mom in the church that can come alongside of one of our single moms that's really struggling and in crisis with her kids and doesn't know how to be a mom? Um, is it someone in our church that has maybe struggled with addictions? And we have some, a, a kid that's trying to get a job, but he just is, keeps falling back into his addiction. Mm. So we can't do it all. So we know if we work with thousands of people in all these congregations, um, that when we work with a liaison in each church, every week we can say, here's the, the need. Um, we need shoes for this kid. We need someone to drive someone to a hospital. We need somebody to help tutoring or help someone with a budget. I feel like there's so many resources in all the congregations. So it's just us being the vehicle where we assess what the need is, but it's really the churches and the community members that are going to come and do life with these people and bring um, just that that deeper connection, that longer-term meaningful relational connection that we are able to provide. Yeah. We can assess and identify the needs and the gaps, and I think another way with the churches, uh, we can see what gaps are. So I can tell right now there's a major mental health issue going on. There's mm. not a lot of resources sure. in the Tri-Valley for that. Okay, church, can you guys have some type of online mental health support groups or classes or workshops? That's the kind of thing I can bring back to the churches and say, hey, you guys want to be a part of the solution because there's definitely a gap. So it's sheltering. There's no winter shelter. Okay, churches, is there something that we can all do together to provide shelter? Because in January, 112 people are going to come out of a hotel that they've been in for four months. Mm. I know that ahead of time. Where are they going to go? There's no winter shelter. So those are the ways where we can assess the needs, the gaps, and then bring back to our churches who we want to be a part of the solution. It's good. That's good. Because that, that helps because some of the time in the church, we don't necessarily know where some of the needs are. So being able to identify and say, you know, you're paying attention, you're, you know, on the ground catching the needs. We're close to the ground in the sense of we got maybe can identify some of the solutions right. or the resources that can help with that. That's, that's excellent. It's a good way to look at that. Do we, from Link Bay Area, what, how, would, how would you look at things and, and so far as partnering and what we can do better together than on our own? Yeah, so, our, so my, my current post in Link Bay Area is a director of mission in my job is to, uh, to focus on ministries, in pocket ministries that are kind of under radar that ministries that you're not going to be able to Google and find or ministries that are not really, they don't pop up on Facebook as much as, and have maybe like 150 or 200 like, you know, views on YouTube. Um, ministries as such are, they, there are so many, and then they reach a completely diverse uh, uh, group of people, not only just ethnically, but socioeconomically, culturally, geographically. Uh, so my, my, my main emphasis is to just be able to identify those leaders and to be able to come alongside them and ask them questions in where they need their help. Mm. So one of the ways that uh, people can partner, especially good, the good people of uh, uh, our Savior Lutheran, is first to just go to our website. It's called linkbayarea.org. And to uh, be able to sign up and write your email in there so you can receive our newsletter uh, on a monthly basis. And our newsletter will be able to direct uh, each, mem like each person that is being um, subscribed to it in where, um, in what kind of options there, there are to help, mm -hmm. what is exactly going on. And also, you will have a view of those ministries that you've never really had an opportunity of knowing their existence or what kind of troubles or struggles they have, but also what kind of blessing they bring to, our, to each of our communities. So that's the first one. The second is um, one of our newsletters comes with a particular prayer of a particular leader. So we name the leader. Uh, we actually write down, we interview the leader uh, about you know, two, three hours, sit down, pray with them. And we write down their immediate needs and we send it out with a small video of the leader uh, for people to take time and pray uh, about their life, their struggles, and their suffering. And a third way is 
um, that you can actually have uh, be part of our um, coaching classes. So we offer coaching classes. We, we kind of license them in a Link Bay Area way, uh, but based on, on, on their scales and your gifts, because we have so many gifted members that could actually you know, that run multi-million, multi-billion organizations that could make a huge impact on a leader if they get, um, they get a small training of how to coach them, and we would assign an individual leader to be coached by them for a certain period of time. And it's just more of like listening, asking good questions, pulling out their dreams, and be able to say, here's the way you can execute it. Um, to just help you uh, get a perspective, my wife was born and raised in Germany, Frankfurt. Uh, she grew up in a German, much more square and highly organized viewpoint. I grew up in the east side of um, Africa where it's like, you know, if we make it tomorrow, that's awesome. So we don't have to, we don't have to worry about retirement. But that's not something we think right, about, you right. know, because who's going to retire anyways, right? And then all of a sudden we got married for 10 years. So the questions we asked are very different questions, you know. Um, uh, but it, it just turn that into you or one of the Livermore, uh, uh, our savior uh, members, asking challenging questions to some of our leaders and then being able to hear their perspective, but also sometimes helping them to help them with a Western viewpoint in how you should do ministry, because it is helpful. And also you will get an opportunity to learn a different viewpoint of how to think about ministry. So it's, a, it's extremely mutual. Um, and the fourth one is, um, of course, Link Bay Area is a nonprofit organization that takes support uh, from individual members in congregations. Uh, so people can partake uh, to be able to uh, donate and give financial support on top of their talent, gift, and prayer. Uh, so yeah. yeah. I love how empowering the conversation has been with that, mm -hmm. that it's not just a, hey, here's, you know, yes, donations, great. I mean, you guys, we'll take those. oh no, I've, <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to put, put, put that as a, as a negative, because I mean, to keep organizations like this going, that's got to happen. But that that's not the first and foremost, that that's not the front line. It's that not the secret sauce. It's, no, because it, it, it's about how do you get, so you, you know, it, it's you know, taking somebody who's struggling with a lack of housing or they're struggling in mental health, mm -hmm. it, there isn't a quick fix mm -hmm. in the sense of, you know, hey, well, here, I'm going to put you in this spot and now you're taken care of. It's how do we get you in a position so that you yourself are empowered enough to be able to successful <laughs> yeah be successful you know handle life on your own you know and, and empowering young leaders to be able to have someone who just asks good questions mm -hmm. who just says hey have you thought about this or how, even I, I love questions like this you know it's the um, and how do you see that working <laughs> working for you <laughs> you know it's, it's because I've been hit by those questions where you go how do you see that working oh probably not as well as I think when it's still in my head right. hmm. okay that's, that's really helpful but so there's a lot of similarity between the two organizations mm -hmm. but there's also a, a sizable difference both in focus and I just would we'll just put it out there because Link Bay Area is much more distinctively Christian primarily Lutheran, though I don't think you limit yourselves to, I mean, it's, hey, we're going to help the church, it, period. Whereas CityServe has a strong history and a connection point with the church, but there isn't a limitation in how you approach things saying this is a church-run organization, it's a church-supported. Mm -hmm. How would you kind of, thinking how to say this, you know, but how do you, know, how do you, are we compromising? Yeah, well, yeah, okay, let's just throw it out there that way. Okay, thank you for just, but I mean, because it's, it's a potential yeah. question what? that someone might have where, hey, I want to support this, but. Right, right. I got a lot of that question, um, or, am I compromising? Because I came from a fully 100% religious nonprofit for 13 years, was running that. Um, all pastors were the board members. Fantastic, very narrow focused, um, religious, and so I get it, and I think it's super important. I never want that to be watered down. However, I felt like there were a lot of obstacles and opportunities that I wasn't able to walk through, um, and I have a strong belief that there needs to be Christians out in the marketplace. There needs to be Christians out in the government, you know, and there's opportunities to come alongside other faith groups and people that are different than us and look different than us. And I feel like 
this organization has a church foundation. It was founded by one church, and four churches got together, and all of our board members, I don't know if I want to say this, uh, they're all Christians. They always will be Christians. I'm a solid believer. Um, so it's completely infused um, with Christianity. However, I want to have a seat at the table, and when I'm there, every decision that I make as a leader is, is based on godly principles. So I love it because it, it sharpens my faith. I'm on my toes constantly, and I'm in government, I'm here. So we created what we call the mercy space, and the mercy space is the space where we have agreed, as our local churches, that we have created where we can work with schools, government, marketplace, um, other faith groups, the churches, and in this space, can we all lay aside our differences and care and have mercy and compassion on those that are hurting? In that space, we want to flood it, of course, with Christians, because the more Christians that are in there, the more um, that God can be, you know, people can be used and sprinkled with love. And trust me, other people will fill that mercy space if the church doesn't. So my heart is why I want to work with the churches. I'm like, get in the mercy space because that's light. That's especially in the Bay Area. And, and so I feel, and I'll let you know in 10 years, I was there 13. Right now, I don't know. I don't, I think there just needs to be different types of organizations. But I feel like I empower whoever volunteers with us. If you are walking alongside of this person that we matched you with and the opportunity comes to share your faith and why you're serving the way that you are, share your story and I, I'm never gonna say don't do that you know what I mean so I'm very so our volunteers that serve with us we encourage them <laughs> you know go share your faith bring them to church invite them to your support your group or your bible study so so that's why I think Roger who was the founder originally set it up specifically as a traditional nonprofit, so that we would have a greater opportunity to do ministry in, in places that most people don't want to go because I think that some of the time, the, the other side of it is there's a tendency, I mean, the church theoretically should be in the community, we're a part of the community, and yet a lot of times, beyond the doors of the community, but beyond the doors of the church, the larger community might look at the church and go, yeah, but what do you have to offer? Mm. And, no, we, I'm going to pick on you with that one. If someone hits you with, well, hey, I'm a member of the community, and, and what does the church have to offer? as our savior as you know at, at good shepherd what 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 do we as churches bring to the table that we should be bringing out as a part of our ministry that moves beyond just what takes place on a sunday or in a bible study here on campus yeah i think it just um first i think th those are doors of righteousness that god opens for us to enter and serve so it's just what you were saying it's this this is through you and through your organization the door open the, the lord opens that door and that's a door of righteousness for us to enter and to be able to be a blessing to many um at good shepherd that was one of our biggest discussions hey we've been here for 60 plus years and what's been our impact and we reviewed our impact there's so many impacts that we did recently we um we had a we had a montessori rent our property that charged about maybe a thousand two hundred per child where an average income in our neighborhood was about $3,000 a month with the rent being 2000 No one gonna be able to afford a school there. So after a lot of conversations, we, uh, we, we, got, we gathered a group of people and to be able to start a charter school in our community that was funded by the state because our church was not in a place to be able to run a private school. But also, even if we run a private school, that's not gonna bring uh, the kids in our neighborhood. So the charter school just, uh, this last year was the first year, it has 90 kids, now it's about to have about 120 uh, kids in the future. And the, the way we respond to the communities, one of the biggest things that we need in Hayward is education. And we did a thorough study because Hayward was ranked at the lowest. That's why families would come to Hayward uh, as a transient. They would come, about a year, they move. A church would grow to maybe 50 plus new members two years later. That church will go down about 60 because they have to raise their kids elsewhere. And we said, what well, there are people that are local here who are not minors, but they're farmers. They are in Hayward, and that's where they're going to be. So we said, uh, what do we offer for them? We want to be able to battle uh, the, the need that they have in having a good education for their children. And we pray that that will be able to... Uh, 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 be able to open up an opportunity for the church to say, you know what, we care for you, we care for your children, uh, but also we also care for your whole being with W, uh, to okay. say we care for you, we love you, uh, but then here is where also God wants to meet you 
uh, uh, through the work of Christ. So uh, I think the most important thing is um, before that question comes and being asked to us in our churches, in our boards, I think it's, it's really, really important what you and your pastor is doing to ask that question, what is the need in our community mm -hmm. before that question is raised enough. So I think it's to be proactive instead of um, reactive to things. Uh, and to c constantly be able to uh, uh, be able to come in contact with, for example, like what you said about January, uh, like people will be out of the hotels. No one would know, you know, right? Like just you, the only one would know that. And all of a sudden, in partnership in what Livermore is doing, um, our Savior, it opens up an opportunity not to react, but to be very proactive and to yeah. prepare uh, to be ahead of that. Because you can do so much more when you're prepared for it mm -hmm. and you know it's coming. Yes, there are things. This year has been a tremendous example of things that you don't get a chance <laughs> to prepare for. Right. Uh, and yet the church in many places have been, has been able to pivot and say, okay, for such a time as this, what can we do? Mm -hmm. How can we serve? What can we be about? Uh, this has been a great conversation. I'm sure we could come up with all sorts of other things mm -hmm. to have conversation about. Maybe we'll do this in an offline mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of a setting for this. So I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, Thank you. being a part of this. Thank I don't you. know if you have any final little thoughts, something that you kind of want to throw in there to say, hey, we didn't cover this, but I'd love people to know. I don't know if there's anything additional. I just I don't know if I was clear or not, but just um, cityservecares.org if you want to volunteer. That's a, a really easy step is to go yeah. in there and fill out a volunteer or, um, application. I just hired a volunteer coordinator because we want to get people back out. Um, I know they're scared and there's all kinds of different opportunities you can even do from home. So that's a, an easy yeah. first step. Good. Yeah. Uh, I think for Link, beside uh, Christian leaders that plant churches, we also help uh, Christian business owners and business leaders. So we connect them uh, to people with, 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 with high skill and high experience uh, to be able to walk. Uh, our focus is uh, the overlooked and underestimated. Um, and we have so many of them in our community that could bring a lot of blessing, not only to the church, but also to the community and marketplace, government, in all aspects of uh, our community. And uh, if Link comes alongside them, uh, we say we're going to connect you to people uh, who did not experience being over overlooked and underestimated, but they're not going to overlook you and they're not going to underestimate you and they will empower you. So. Wow. It's a, it's a great phrase, overlooked know, and underestimated. That's, that. Yeah, that's going to get used elsewhere for a while. But uh, <laughs> this is great. Again, I thank you. I appreciate the time, the effort to come here and to do this. And our Savior, I, hey, I appreciate you guys continuing through this series uh, and exploring the new things that we can do. Mm. Not really radically new, but kind of a new emphasis and a new focus in the way we do ministry here and all the great opportunities. I look forward to helping launch many of you into things that you're probably already raring to go. So blessings. Have an awesome week, our Savior. Blessings. Uh, blessings.